Hey everyone, in this episode of the On Not Net Show, I'm going to have Cam come on to show us his puppet automation firmware that allows you to work with these IoT devices locally in your own home. Hey everyone, my name is Cecil Phillip, and in this episode of the On Net Show, I'm going to have my buddy Cam, who's going to talk to me about some of these interesting .NET and IoT things that you've been, been playing around with. Sure. So, Cam, why don't you, you know, since you haven't been on the show before, tell us a little bit about who you are and what exactly you do. So, I work on the .NET Docs team here at Microsoft. Okay. Um, I'm actually primarily focused on ASP.NET and Azure topics. Okay. Uh, IoT is, is a hobby of mine and a, a huge interest. So, I, uh, um, you know, any, any device that I buy, I have to figure out how I, can, how I can make it do what I want it to do in my environment. Sure, 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 sure. So talk to me really quickly about what's all this cool stuff you have here. I feel like I'm in like a playground, right? Like I'm in mm -hmm. developer Toys R Us. Okay, so first, let's just, this right here is just power. So we'll ignore that. And this is, this is my router. So that's part of my little local area network here for, sure. for our discussion today. But the most important piece of hardware that I want to show off is this guy right here. This is a home automation hub. Now, this is made by a company called Hubitat. It's a Hubitat. Yeah. I'm going to get this wrong. Hubitat Elevation. I, I think I previously called it Elevate, and they yeah. yelled at me for that. Uh-oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, anyway, it's, uh, it's a home automation hub. And the idea behind a home automation hub is it's a central uh, management point for IoT devices, generally working on proprietary protocols like Z-Wave and Zigbee, okay. but also Wi-Fi devices and, and other types of integration. So this would be similar to something like uh, a SmartThings, like a Samsung SmartThings it, or something like that? Very similar to smart things. In fact, Hubitat's programming model is almost identical to smart things. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. But with the Hubitat though, this is more of a, a DIY type thing. Like it's 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 internal, like it doesn't so go out and talk to cloud services and stuff like that. I don't have a subscription that I got to mm -hmm. pay for. The kind of the big selling point for Hubitat over smart things is that all of the execution takes place locally, yeah. whereas with smart things a lot of it takes place in the cloud. Got it. And you know for, you know, for some of us uh, home automation hobbyists, you know, that distinction is kind of it, it can it can be important depending on what we're trying to do. Got it, got it. Okay. All right, so let's 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 take a look at some of these like devices and stuff. So why don't we start off with this uh, remote control? Okay. So this remote control is a Z-Wave remote control. Yeah. Um, it has, as you can see, it has four buttons, and each one of these buttons, I can press them and get what's called a push event, yeah. or I can hold them and get what's called a held event. So I have eight, eight functions that I can kick off on this remote control. Nice. And I actually use one of these, just like this at home, to drive a speaker system in my house. Oh, nice. I use it to communicate with folks outside of my office. I work from home, and I have three teenage boys. So they're, they're pretty loud and noisy all the time? It, that, that's an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, without fail, they choose when I'm in a meeting or mm -hmm. some kind of presentation to be especially loud and, and uh, unruly. And I've got the capability through Hubitat to, um, to uh, Send notifications. Do, do text to speech over a speaker in my house, and okay. I've actually programmed my remote so that I have different sayings, different phrases that I can say. Like, for example, your father requires quiet now. Nice. Okay. <clears throat> so, like, if you press the button right now, like, it'll it'll kick off mm -hmm. and do that. Well, and let me run my application. Okay. So you have some code now that you're running on your computer, mm -hmm. and I'm guessing this is like some of that. Um, some of that localized code, right? That code is running in your house. Mm -hmm. That's going to integrate with the Hubitat and allow you to do those things? Correct. So the, the Hubitat itself, they have a, a programming environment. They have a, you can write code for, for the Hubitat device using a language called Groovy. I okay. extended, using their APIs, I, mm -hmm. I isolated all of the functionality on, in my home automation network. Um, I, I made the Hubitat device strictly a hub for uh, basically a control point for all my devices. No, I don't have any code running on this guy at all. Okay. I take that back. I have a tiny bit of code running on it, but very little. Yeah. And all of the code that I use to drive the automation in my house is .NET based. Okay. So what we're seeing right here on my screen is a .NET application that I've written. Okay. And it handles events coming out of this hub. So when I push button one here, that's going to trigger a push event that this, that this button was pushed, yep. and it's going to fire off some code to make an announcement over, over the audio. So we'll do that. Your father requires quiet, please. Oh, wow. Yeah. That generally gets the job done. <laughs> if it doesn't, I push four. Whatever you are doing, 
It is frustrating your father. Please correct it now or there will be consequences. I love it. Or I can hold for. I said there will be consequences. Big consequences. That's awesome. I love that. I love that. So so let, let's, let's talk about this really quick, how, how this whole integration piece happens. So that .NET code is not running on the Hubitat. Correct. Right? So I'm, I'm guessing at your home, there is a server or some device, right, that is running, like a, you know, like a, a application server, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing you're running like a, a .NET console app, web mm -hmm. API or some, some sort. So th this is a console application. It runs. Um, it, it's just a straight up console app. I just run it as a daemon on a um, on a Raspberry Pi, actually. Okay. Um, I'm interested in moving it to containers. I just haven't gotten around to that yet. But I could. I, I do have an Ubuntu server at home that I could run it on in Docker. Sure. Uh, just haven't gotten there. Now here, it's running completely on my surface. Yeah. So essentially, it doesn't really matter. Right? Correct. Like it could it's, be a Raspberry Pi. It could be a Docker container. It could be running as a as a like a systemd thing in Linux. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. It's essentially just a service that's running. And I'm guessing somehow you were able to integrate into the Hubitat. I'm guessing you gave it. You know when this event happens, call this endpoint. So kind of they, thing. they they expose a RESTful interface for me to control devices. Like for example, um, for example, this bulb here. I can use Postman here, okay. and send an on command to it. And okay, great. And now, now this bulb is on. Mm -hmm. Okay. And likewise, I can turn it off. Sure. <clears throat> and then I'm guessing you do things like. You know, you can dim it or make it brighter, and mm -hmm. you know what I mean. I'm sure if there were different colors, you could do those types of things as well Correct. if you wanted to. Correct. So uh, that's the first part of it: is controlling the devices that I've got attached to this hub. It's all through this RESTful interface. Sure. Uh, the other side of it is they have a now it's it's undocumented and it's technically not supported, but they have a uh, web socket that runs on the device okay. to drive their administration portal. Mm -hmm. And what I do in my code is I attach to that web socket and I watch it for events as they get raised. Yeah. So when I push that button, it raises an event on the web socket with, uh, with a little chunk of JSON that describes what happened. Yeah. And I'm grabbing that and using that to kick off, the, the, well, to kick off an event in my code that um, drives, you know, it, it does whatever I've you know, programmed it to do. And I have a certain assembly I call puppet.automation that uh, it actually goes looking through the assembly for whatever. Uh, whatever classes declaratively say they are interested in whatever event happened. Okay. So, all right. So let me let me make sure I'm, I'm getting this. So, WebSocket, mm -hmm. WebSocket listening for various events. Yep. So if you push the button on your remote control, mm -hmm. you know, long press or just really quick press. Right. It sends an event. The event kicks off a WebSocket thing, mm -hmm. and then in your code that's running on your server, wherever the server happens to be, mm -hmm. .NET Core, it. You're gonna call back one of these RESTful APIs that'll let it know what device to turn on or turn off or interact with. Well, in the case of the Office Remote, um, let me stop that. In the case of the Office Remote, I've got some attributes here on my class here that say, okay, if the device, if the remote device, mm -hmm. it has a button held or a button pushed, we are interested. This is declaratively, we are interested, and the the engine knows to go out there and load this class and fire off this handle method. Sure. And then the handle method, you can see the code right there, is pretty self-explanatory. Um, if, the, if the button is pushed and it's the button one, we say your father requires quiet, please. Sure. And then down here, but if the button four is pushed, whatever you're doing, et cetera, et cetera. And then you saw I held earlier, so that's you know, the opposite of is button pushed event. Yeah. Um, and I said there will be consequences, big consequences. Got it, got it. So let's talk a little bit about how, like, where did this code come from, right? Because I'm guessing Hubitat didn't create like a .NET API framework for us to integrate with this <coughs> device. So, so what is what are we looking at right now? So the the impetus behind this was actually um, laziness, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Sure, that's right. Uh, so they have, uh, like I said, they have a, a programming model that's actually fairly mature. Uh, it's yeah. built on a language called Groovy, yeah. um, which I had not been familiar with Groovy before I got into Smart Things and sure. Habitat. That was all new to me, uh, and I just was not as effective in their environment as I was in in our beloved .NET Core. Sure, uh, and I. I started, you know, asking myself, well, if I wanted to do automation using .NET, how would I go about doing it? Yeah. Um, and that's that's really how we arrived at this. Is I, I just wrap this in this .NET process I've created. Sure. Okay, that's really cool. So now you have this framework that you've created, and I'm guessing you've probably spent like months and months and months of time of trial and error and just trying to figure stuff out. Mm -hmm. But now you have this code, and I'm guessing it's on GitHub and mm -hmm. just openly available. 
It is. That it makes it, it's probably super easy now for you to add another device and just mm -hmm. start working with it. Yeah, uh, so this is, this is the, the branch of my GitHub uh, repository where I keep my, my demo projects. Yeah. Um, I have a separate branch that's my house. Okay. And, and in fact, anybody can go, I, I keep it public. Anybody can go in and look at the code that drives my house. I, I mean, I don't have like credentials or anything sure, in there, sure, so sure, it's sure. safe. Um, but yeah, essentially all I have to do is come into this puppet.automation project mm -hmm. and add a new class that um, represents a device. Th that basically. represents a, uh, an automation that I want it to do. Oh, and, okay. and declaratively, again, I say, what devices are you interested in? And I have this whole, um, this is a bad example. I have another example here. The, I have a, uh, a, a syntax, essentially, for turning devices off and on, mm -hmm. uh, like in this case, where if I run this again, what this code does is it responds to the open event on this contact sensor. So okay. when, I, when I open this, it's going to turn the bulb on. Right. So what you're doing now is you're opening and closing that sensor you had on the table. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So now you opened it, mm -hmm. and now this light comes on. Please close the door. The, that's cool. Yeah, that's what happens on my pantry at home because the teenage boys always leave the pantry open. Sure, so, sure, sure. so it, it's it's longer than that. It's five minutes at home. What's interesting is that like I feel like there are multiple events that happened just now, mm -hmm. right? So you opened the door, right? Like you simulated opening the door, mm -hmm. but then your speaker went off, mm -hmm. and then also your light went on. Correct. Right. So then I can have multiple handlers, right? That process events. And based on that, like they can interact with whatever devices that are available through the Hubitat. Mm -hmm. Now you do have to be a little careful. I got myself into a, 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 a bit of a, a problem the other day. My the front lights on my house are, are actually a very complicated program because they're all um, they are all smart lights and they're capable of different colors. And I wanted yeah. to be able to manage like if I open the front door, if I have the lights set to color, like for example a, a holiday. Uh, display. Sure. If I have them set to some kind of color, I want them to go back to a nice soft white to illuminate, you know, where you're walking and on, you know, on my driveway or whatever. Sure. Um, but the logic behind that is actually kind of complicated. And I actually made a little mistake when I was testing the other day and yeah. created a recursive loop that, uh -oh. <laughs> that brought the whole system crashing down. Uh -oh. So you kind of have to be careful about what you're doing in this framework. But um, sure. but it, it, it's 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 been running in my house now for. The better part of a year. Uh, wow. It's it's it's. I've been using it as the you know the the central automation for all the devices in my house now for for that long. Great. And so 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 just really quickly. So this whole framework that you built is built on .NET Core, C Sharp, um, and I'm guessing now you have your own, for lack of better words, like your own DSL, right? Like your own structure of how like you interact with these totally different devices, right? Mm -hmm. What made you decide to to do this? Like outside of laziness, right? But like, <laughs> like why, did you, why did you decide to? Why did you decide to again not just use a thing, like smart things or whatever, and build your own thing in .NET? You know, the the real inspiration came, I think, when um, when .NET Core, uh, I think it was the 2.0 release of .NET Core that became um, that you could run it on small like ARM devices. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I'm I'm looking for opportunities to run .NET Core on Raspberry Pi everywhere, yeah. right? And I've got I've got other projects in my house, you know, being driven by Raspberry Pi and yeah. .NET Core. Uh, but it, there was a there was a period of time there where I was just looking for any project I could build and run it on a you know a tiny credit card sized computer. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, this is a great project, man. So if if people want to get involved in you know check out the code or maybe even learn how to run it on their own habitats in their own house. Like where would they go and how would they kind of get involved? So um, the the GitHub the excuse me the GitHub repository for this project uh, I have a README on there that should hopefully get you started. Um, I don't think I've updated it in a while, so there might be there might be some discrepancies there, sure, but I'll sure. try and make sure this it gets updated before this uh, before this posts. Sure. And uh, if if I fail in that, please reach out to me and and uh, I'm always happy to answer questions. Sure, great. Um, but the uh, you want the the repo address? Yeah, or? if you could like if you pop over in the repo really quickly. So folks can see where it is. Sure. And then what we'll do as well, like while you pull it up, we'll just make sure that it's inside of the show notes. So if people want to come in and again look at the code, look at the documentation. Um, and I believe you've also done some like conference talks and presentations about this as well. Mm -hmm. So we could probably link to those so folks could actually see like some more of the demos and things like that that you have. Sure, yeah. I was actually uh, presented this at uh, .NET Conf 2019 just a few months ago. So awesome. uh, there's there is uh, there's already a video out on channel nine. All right, great. So again, so what we'll do, we'll make sure that the repo is inside of the show notes, and so everyone could go in and try it out. But thank you so much, man. Like this, like this is such an exciting thing for me. Like every time I get a new toy to play with, like I could, I can't just like wait to to mess around with it. 
So thank you again for coming on. Thanks for having me. And thank you all for watching. This has been another episode of the On.Net Show. If you like this episode, make sure you like the video, share it with your friends, and make sure to check out Puppet, which is Cam's automation firmware for working with the Habitat device. Thank you.